Hello everybody, this is going to be a short video to describe how to use this Atmega 328P to drive a 128 by 64 OLED display using the graphics library U8G2. Righto, let's give this a start. Make a beginning by going to the U8 G2 library in Git on GitHub, which is offered by Mr. Krauss. Download the code, and once you've downloaded, go and unpack it into a suitable spot. In my case, I've put it under this documents, or this PC documents, and this name just so I can find it easily for this video. And once you download those and unpack it and what have you, then you end up with a set of files. What you really need is this sys directory. And under the AVR, AS7, Atmos Studio 7, the author has kindly provided us a set of instructions and images. And those, in, those instructions are these. And we're going to work through them with a few modifications to make it work on my bare bones at Mega 328P. Okay, so let's make a start. Firstly, we need a plain Atmos Studio, in this case, Microchip Studio, same thing, as far as I can tell. So that'll do me. So we have a, a, a vanilla opened template open here. So we want to create a new GCC executable project, step two. So file, oops, new project, GCC executable project, click on that, give it a name, let's say U8G2 graphics, it's going to put it under this same directory as where I've unpacked the library, and that's the same name, that'll do me nicely. Now, step three is to select the target device, which in this case is in at mega 328p, which is that one. I don't have any of these, so I can't do it with that. I have to use a USB ASP. And it's busy doing its bit. So it has, don't worry about those errors. That's something to do with um, Microchip Studio not working properly. Seems to do that fairly frequently. Not sure what's going on. Anyway, it has created the standard C template. We're going to get rid of that because we don't need it. There we go. Now, step four. AS7 will generate the main C file. Yeah, that, we just got rid of that. Replace the contents of that with the generated main C with the contents of this directory. Now, in our case, we're not going to use this directory from AS7. We're in fact going to, because I want to make it talk I2C, we're going to go and use this AVR libc directory and the hardware I2C, which gives us this main file here. And that's the one we're going to add. And we'll do that by, first of all, click that. Then right click, add existing item. So now we're in, we want to go here, AVR, AVR libc, hardware, main C, that's the one. Gonna add that. Perfect. Now, when we click on that, we should see the code from the library, or rather the example code from the library for this particular device, which is not what I've got, but we'll fix that. Going back there. Okay. Step five. Open the project properties, add existing item on step six. Mark and add all the source directory and press add. Okay, so this is the first variation of what we're going to do here. Select that. Go to add 
a new folder and in this case we're going to call it csrc c source and then click on that add existing items now we are going to go and get all of the files in C source which is under the UG8 master when you download the library so click on your new C source library right click add add existing items select all these files and add and you can then minimize that. Okay, next we need to do the same thing again. So we'll add U8G2, add new folder, and this time we're going to call that lib. And then under that we are going to add a new folder. called AVR-Hardware-I2C. Now going back to that, we are going to add existing items. And under system, AVR, AVR libc, there's the library lib that we want. We want all three of those, but only two will copy. And this one is blank. That's the one we created. So we can add existing items. Notice that that title there and this title here is the same title. There we are. Now we've set up the, lib the, the library, we set up all the source files, and we're ready to go along and do things. So we've made progress. So we've added all the C source files now, uh, and we've added the other two files for the, to make it work. Now we have to go and set up the directories. So. In here we should go UG2 graphics, right click, properties, brings up this window, under this window go to toolchain, all configurations. Make sure you have all configurations, it just really makes life a lot easier. Directories, add a directory. Now we have double dot, which Mr. Cross describes here, so we'll put in that directory. We also must add these new directories we created here, which is lib and C source. And of course, this library as well. There we go, got them all. So now when it compiles, it will know where to go and look for those. Now, next step. Select the project, locate the tool chain, all configurations, blah, blah, blah. Set the speed of your pro CPU. This is very important, otherwise your, your delays won't work. So again, oh, we don't need to do that again. Go to symbols, tool chain, all configurations, symbols. And in here, we want to add a defined symbol called f underscore cpu equals. Do not put any spaces between the f cpu, the equals, and the equals, and the clock speed of your CPU, which in my case is 8 megahertz. 
as per the example, coincidentally. Now, you also want to add another instruction in here. So if you have a quick look at this directory, you will notice that you can tell the ABR to use hardware SPI, and you can tell the library to use hardware I2C. We want to use the ABR hardware I2C, so we actually want to tell it to do that. And we can do that again. Properties, symbols, add another one, paste. There we go. So we need these two symbols, all configurations, tool chains, yep, that's all good. Save all that, and we should be done. Going back to this main C file. This is the device that comes with the example. It isn't the one that I've got, so I'll need to change that. Now, I found the easiest way to change this and to find it. There are other ways of doing it, but it's just easy to do this. So, under the wiki for this library, there's a U8G2C setup code reference. And you end up with all the various types that this library supports. So we'll do a, a search and my device is an SSD 1306 space 128 by 64 underscore no name. Right, there's two of them. So we'll try the first one and you'll see that there's none of these devices have I2C anywhere. There's a bit of SPI there, that's software SPI, and various other ones. So we'll go to the next one, which is that one. Hmm. Here we go, which is this one. Get it right. Okay. So, no, still haven't got it right. Eventually, got there. Okay, so here we'll see that there's I2C, and they're obviously 128 by 64, no names. So this is a, a single page buffer. That's two pages of buffer, and that's a full page of buffer. So it just uses more memory. So since I've got nothing else in this uh, CPU or in the in the uh, in the AppMega, so I'm just going to copy that entire frame and use the full frame example. So copy that. Go back to our Admiral Studio. Paste that in there. Okay. This lot here is consistent from device to device, or from, yeah, from device to device, so we'll just copy and paste it in there. So that gives me all of those. It now says I2C 128 by 64 no name full, uh, full frame buffer. And that should be it. And for some reason, this is in the while loop, which I don't exactly know why, so I'm just going to shift it out. And there we are. That should now write the code, and we should see UAG2 ABR hardware R2C appearing once I've managed to program the device. So, going back to our text file from Mr. Cross. Okay, so we've done all that now. We've set the, set the symbols so now we can compile it, go to F7, build, build solution. It's going to take a little while because it's got to compile all of those um, files we have under C source. It doesn't take too long, it's just a few moments. I'm going to let it do it for the sake of the video so people can see what's happening. 
finish building the mine direct the mine file as well. I think it's busy linking at the moment and doing whatever it needs to do. And you'll see that the build has been successful. So I now should have this device right to my screen. So let's give it a bash. Programming. There we are. Isn't that beautiful? Now it says UAG2. And we can change the text. Let's say, oh, let's say we don't like it in that position. So we want to shift it down. That's the X coordinate. So that shifts it left and right, which we don't want to do in this case. We do want to shift it down. So the middle of the screen is about 25 units. I don't know what the units are, so I won't talk about that here. Let's give that a bash. Build, build solution. Much faster this time because it only compiles just the change file, and of course that's the use and the benefit of make files. Done that, and we'll load it back up. Just a moment, there we go, shifted it. And let's put some other text in there. Go back to Hello World. Just for the fun of it. Build, build solution. And again, it's quite quick. Send it to the USB ASP2 program. And there we are. All done. Okay, so just quickly recapping. For convenience sake, create yourself a directory called C source under your um, solution and also a library, a lib directory under the under the solution. And in that lib directory put the I2C or SPI if you wanted to. I have not tried that, but hopefully that works too. And then copy all those files into those various directories. Then go to your properties into tool chain all configurations directories add all those directories so that the compiler can find them then add your CPU speed and also tell it that you want to use tell your compiler that you want to use the hardware I2C from the AVR and that's this file here once you've done all that, you should be ready to go. And you can do all sorts of things with it, which I won't go into here, but it's fun. OK, let's go back to the main quickly. To use the U8 by 8 non-graphics but character driver for this, you need to create a new structure. And then you need to change this um, directory line. And for the rest, it stays the same. So after a bit of mucking about, I managed to do that, um, which I thought I might shift to a separate video, just because this one's already getting a bit long. Anyway, so thank you everybody for your time and trouble with this. I hope you have fun and that you have success with um, uh, setting it up yourself. Goodbye.